everyone. Welcome back to all my listeners. Now, I hope you're all having a great day so far. I know I am. And if it's your first time finding me, thanks so much and welcome. Welcome to episode 17 of my fifth season. Today is Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. My name is Sonal Patel, and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Now, all right, guys, I've got so much to get into today, but can you believe it's already the end of April? I cannot believe it's already over so quickly. But anyway, I'm going to be diving into my compliance tips and my recommendations today on the new hot off the press CBR just being mailed out for ambulance ground transportation. And hey, you know what it is. It's my favorite day of the month. It's my month end episode where I discuss highlights from the month of April's criminal and civil enforcement cases involving fraud, waste and abuse. And I round out today's episode with a remarkable quote on clarity and focus from Nobel Peace Prize laureate Malala. If you've checked me out on LinkedIn, you know I'm all about compliance and protecting our physicians and our valued healthcare professionals when it comes to the business of medicine. I hope this week with me brings you enough to take back to your organizations to want to dive in deeper, to use my tips and best practices to ensure success. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve coding accuracy as you help your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a review and kindly drop me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to my podcast. I'd really love your support. And as always, a friendly disclaimer. Remember, I'm bringing you the news, current healthcare industry news, my compliance tips and my recommendations based on my over 10 years of experience in front office, back end, coding and billing for multi-specialty physicians, compliance and auditing for both ENM and surgical operative reports. These are my opinions alone and are not to be construed as legal advice. So let's get into Newsworthy, the month's fraud, waste, and abuse cases. The month of April saw a whopping 38 cases as of the recording of this episode. Early April saw a case settle in a $16 million settlement for unnecessary drug testing. Now, this particular settlement resolves allegations that from January 1st of 2015 through December 31st of 2019, the owners of a clinical laboratory improperly billed Medicaid for unnecessary urine drug testing. Under the settlement, the clinical laboratory has agreed to pay a minimum of $11.6 million up to $16 million, depending on the financial viability of the company to resolve these allegations. The complaint alleges that the lab violated the Federal False Claims Act by simultaneously performing two different drug urine tests, both presumptive and confirmatory, and billing federal health care programs for these tests, knowing the presumptive test results were irrelevant for most health care providers. Early April also saw yet another case involving labs. Here, the DOJ the Department of Justice, filed a False Claims Act complaint against two laboratory CEOs and one hospital CEO, based on patient referrals in violation of the anti-kickback statute and the Stark Law, as well as claims otherwise improperly billed to federal health care programs for laboratory testing. Now, the laboratory executives allegedly conspired to pay doctors to induce referrals to the hospitals for laboratory testing, which was then performed by their own entities. The complaint also alleges that the hospitals paid a portion of their laboratory profits to recruiters, who in turn kicked back those funds to the referring doctors. The recruiters then allegedly set up companies known as Management Service Organizations, or MSOs, to make payments to referring doctors that were disguised as investment returns, but were actually based on and offered in exchange for the doctor's referrals. 
As alleged in the complaint, the executives and Salesforce employees leveraged the MSO kickbacks to doctors to increase referrals and in turn, their own bonuses and their own commissions. The complaint further alleges that laboratory tests resulting from this referral scheme were billed to various federal health care programs and that the claims not only were tainted by improper inducements, but in many cases also involved tests that were not reasonable nor medically necessary. In addition, the complaint alleges that to increase reimbursement, the entities falsely billed the laboratory tests as hospital outpatient services. Now, mid-April, there's a case where the DOJ once again and a health clinic resolve a False Claims Act investigation over the use of imported birth control medications. Now, these birth control medications that were unlawfully imported from a foreign source and they were not approved by the Food and Drug Administration. That's our FDA. And under the terms of this particular settlement, the clinic will pay a total of $120,000 to the state and federal governments for false claims the clinic filed with state or federal medical programs. It's also alleged that this clinic imported and billed for the birth control medications between the years 2015 and 2020. And April's end saw a substance abuse treatment clinic and owner agreeing to settle False Claims Act allegations. The clinic and owner have agreed to pay at least $125,000 and up to as much as $335,000 to resolve allegations they violated the False Claims Act by billing Medicare and Medicaid for high-complexity and prolonged medical evaluation and management services when such services were not rendered. Now, between 2017 and 2019, they allegedly billed Medicare and Medicaid for expensive medical evaluation and management services when at most less expensive counseling services were provided. Now, of course, there were also many, many of my usual suspects like more opioids distributors, overprescribing, kickbacks, bribery schemes, elder abuse cases, and money laundering. But I wanted to pay particular attention to the 2022 National COVID-19 Healthcare Fraud Enforcement Action. Now, the Department of Health and Human Services, that's our HHS, and the Office of Inspector General, the OIG, and their many law enforcement partners have been participating in a sweeping coordinating law enforcement actions to combat COVID-19 related healthcare fraud. Now, 21 defendants in nine federal districts across the U.S. were charged for their alleged participation in various healthcare fraud schemes that exploited the COVID-19 pandemic and resulted in over $149 million in false billings. Defendants include telemedicine companies, physicians, marketers, and medical business owners. And along that same vein, there was an organization and its founder who have agreed to pay $24.5 million to resolve allegations that they violated the False Claims Act by billing federal health care programs for unnecessary medical testing and services, paying unlawful remuneration to its physician employees, and making a false statement in connection with the loan obtained through the Small Business Administration, the SBA's Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP. Now, the United States alleged that this organization caused the submission of claims for medically unnecessary urine drug testing, or UDTs, by requiring its physician employees to order multiple tests at the same time without determining whether any testing was reasonable and medically necessary, or even reviewing the results of initial testing. For example, for reviewing presumptive UDTs to determine whether additional testing, such as in confirmatory UDTs, was even warranted. 
The organization's affiliated toxicology lab then billed federal health care programs for the highest level UDT. In addition, the organization incentivized its physician employees to order presumptive UDTs by paying them 40% of the profits from such testing in violation of the Stark Law, which prohibits physicians from referring patients to receive designated health services payable to Medicare or Medicaid from entities with which the physician or an immediate family member has a financial relationship, unless there's an exception that applies. Now, the United States further alleged that this organization required patients to submit to genetic and psychological testing before the patients were even seen by physicians without making any determination as to whether the testing was reasonable and medically necessary, and then build federal health care programs for those tests. The United States further alleged that when the state suspended all non-emergency medical procedures to reduce the transmission of COVID-19 back in March of 2020, the organization sought to compensate for lost revenue by requiring its physician employees to schedule unnecessary evaluation and management appointments with patients every 14 days instead of every month as had been the organization's prior practice. The organization then instructed all of its physicians to bill these particular ENM types of visits using inappropriate high-level procedure codes. Moreover, the United States alleged that at the same time the organization was engaged in this particular unlawful overbilling, they also falsely represented to the SBA that it was not engaged in unlawful activity in order to obtain a $5.9 million loan through the PPP. The settlement resolves liability under, under the False Claims Act and the Financial Institutions Reform, Recovery, and Enforcement Act, arising from the false claims submitted to federal health care programs for the ENM visits as well as for the organization's false statement in connection with its PPP loan. Oh my goodness, right? So what a huge month of April's fraud, waste, and abuse cases once again. Remember, there were 38 of them at the time of this recording. So very many. And these last two that I highlighted on COVID-19 are just massive and just incredible what people have done throughout this entire PHE. It's sad and shocking, and um, I'm happy to share. There are many, many more cases, right, in terms of the amount of recovery that the DOJ, the OIG, as well as all of the federal law enforcement teams that were involved on these multiple, multiple cases over these past years. So I do my very best each and every month trying to highlight those cases that I find most interesting. I do my best to provide solid guidance and advice to my providers to be mindful of correct coding and compliant billing practices to avoid joining these very serious, these very public, and often very hefty outcomes. I always believe these types of fraud, waste, and abuse cases are most helpful. So please take a deeper look into these reports and see how they may affect you, your provider, or your facility. Start self-auditing your service claims and coordinating documentation to ensure you are meeting compliance. And now, it's time for my best practice tips in trusty tip. So, in today's compliance tip, I wanted to focus on the latest comparative billing report, or CBR, issued on ambulance ground transportation. Now, this is CBR 202204. That's right, it's the fourth CBR for the new year for 2022. Now, during the end of April, right now as I'm recording, CMS will be issuing a comparative billing report on Medicare Part B claims for ambulance ground transportation. This CBR 202204 focuses on providers that submitted claims for ground transportation services for Medicare Part B beneficiaries with Healthcare Common Procedure Coding System, or HCPCS codes, A0425, A0426, 
A0427, A0428, A0429, A0432, A0433, and A0434. Now, these HCPCS codes will be referred to as ambulance services in general throughout your CBR letter. Now, additionally, HCPCS codes A0428 and A0429 will be referred to as basic life support services throughout the CBR. And HCPCS codes A0426, A0427, A0432, A0433, and A0434 will be referred to as, as advanced life support services throughout the CBR. Now, of course, this particular CBR reminds us to use this data-driven report to compare your billing practices with those of your peers in your state as well as across the country. Now, CBR 202204 summarizes statistics for services with dates of service from January 1st of 2019 through December 31st of 2019. Again, that's one full calendar year. Now, there were 9,967 providers to be exact, with a combined allowed charge amount of over $5 billion during this full calendar year, this particular analysis time frame. Now, the ambulance services vulnerability, they disclosed that to us because based on the 2021 Medicare fee-for-service supplemental improper payment data report, they disclosed that there was a 7.9% improper payment rate for ambulance services, which represents over $405 million in improper payment. Now, 56.6% of this improper payment rate is attributed to insufficient documentation. That's a huge number. Now, another big one, 31.3% of this improper payment rate is attributed to medical necessity errors. Now, what the CBR is trying to tell us to do, what is the desired behavior here? Obviously, is to help ensure that the clinical documentation for ambulance ground transportation validates the patient's need for the service. So again, the medical necessity is the driver here. That's what we have to see. Now, let me go over some of the basic definitions for a few of these HCPCS codes that the CBR lays out for us. So HCPCS code A0425 is defined as ground mileage. HCPCS code A0426 is defined as ambulance service, advanced life support, non-emergency transport. Then HCPCS code A0427 is defined as ambulance service, advanced life support, emergency transport. Moving on to HCPCS code A0428, that's defined as ambulance service, basic life support, non-emergency transport. And then HCPCS code A0429 is defined as ambulance service, basic life support, emergency transport. And then HCPCS code A0432 is for paramedic intercept rural area. And then HCPCS code A0433 is for advanced life support. And then HCPCS code A0434 is for specialty care transport. Now, this particular CBR, again, 202204, analyzes the following things. So our ambulance providers that submitted claims for ground transportation for Medicare Part B beneficiaries. So as we look into this criteria for this CBR, it's going to involve three things. They want to see if the provider has, number one, significantly higher behaviors, right, compared to either state or national percentages in any of the three metric calculations, which means they have to be greater than or equal to the 90th percentile. And then number two, if that provider has had at least 100 total beneficiaries with claims submitted for HCPCS codes A0428 and A0429. Now remember, those are those ambulance service, basic life support, non-emergency transport, and emergency transport codes. And then finally, third, 
they're looking at if that provider has had at least $54,000 worth in total allowed charges for those same two HCPCS codes, A0428 and A0429, again, for the basic life support, non-emergency and emergency transport services. Now, remember that A0428 and A0429 are the basic life support types of ambulance ground transportation services. Now, they disclose further that the metrics involved in CBR 202204 involve these following three. Now, the first is for the percent of ambulance services that are basic life support, non-emergency ground transportation services. Number two, the average number of rides per beneficiary for the basic life support non-emergency service. And then finally, third, the average mile reported with HCPCS code A0425, according to urban, rural, and super rural locales. Now, it's critical to understand, again, that the CBR does not indicate that you're going to get an official audit, right? But I've said this on many of my CBR episodes before, all of those trusty, all of those trusty tips, I state that do me be mindful that this phrase is literally coming from the max that issue the CBR. So please take that with plenty and plenty of grains of salt. More closely, I do believe this is your notice, this is your warning, that you are being looked at closely. But the value of the CBR to providers is that it does serve as a tool to look at your billing patterns as compared to your peers. The value also includes the facts that specific coding guidelines and billing information will be detailed. The CBR informs providers whose billing patterns differ from those of their peers. And of course, the desired behavior here is to capture proper and compliant documentation for these types of ambulance ground transportation services, right? So it's important to keep in mind that a study from the Office of Inspector General, that's our OIG, of course, they released way back years ago in July of 2018, and it's titled Medicare Improperly Paid Providers for Non-Emergency Ambulance Transports to destinations not covered by Medicare. Now, again, let me remind us that was written in 2018, and it disclosed their findings from the OIG to include, quote, Medicare made improper payments of $8.7 million to providers for non-emergency ambulance transports, right? Again, the same thing that we're talking about in the CBR in 2022. So $8.7 million to providers for non-emergency ambulance transports to destinations not covered by Medicare, including the identified ground mileage associated with the transports. So again, very similar. Medicare covers ambulance transports to only certain destinations, such as hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, those are our SNFs, and the beneficiaries' residences. Medicare also covers these transports from a SNF to the nearest supplier of medically necessary services, diagnostic, or therapeutic sites when the beneficiary is a SNF resident and those services are not available at the SNF. The majority of the improperly billed claim lines in this report from 2018 was 59%, right? And they were for transports to diagnostic or therapeutic sites other than a physician's office or a hospital that did not originate from SNFs, end quote. So this report was lengthy, but I thought this particular snippet was worth me repeating to all of you. So I think in this instance, I hope your providers are performing their internal auditing. It's fundamental, right? If you have Medicare as a payer to keep your eye on correct and compliant coding and billing practices and make sure you are adhering to all of them. It's vital to capture a full and robust documentation practice to ensure you are meeting the medical necessity from the very start. So please start by tracking your ambulance ground transportation services. It's so important to make sure clinical documentation addresses 
and captures all indications for coverage. And then you can avoid the whopping 56% improper payment rate for insufficient documentation and the 31% improper payment rate for medical necessity. So a better, smarter approach is one that's proactive and starts by painting a clear, rich, and vibrant medical picture the first time. So your certified medical coder can then abstract codes with accuracy. And finally, I focus season five spark on clarity and focus. I want this fifth season spark to be filled with the world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for clarity and focus in all that we do. So in this week's inspiring quote in Spark is from the incredible Pakistani activist Malala. We realize the importance of our voices only when we are silenced. So very true, right? I think this is an amazing quote that reminds us, inspires us, that our focus should remain on our voices. This quote inspires us to focus on the strength of our voice, to allow clarity, to allow focus, to reveal themselves. After all, it's both our inner and our outer voices that allow each and every one of us to be seen. I'm so happy Malala's spark still burns brightly in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you all diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. Please have an amazing week ahead and please continue staying safe and healthy. Thank you so much for listening in on today's episode. And I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday.